Before we get practical, we need to spend a few moments talking about frequency and amplitude, the fundamental characteristics of sound. On a sound wave graph, frequency is represented by how close the peaks and troughs are together. The more frequently the waves repeat, the higher the frequency and, consequently, the higher the pitch of the sound. Amplitude, on the other hand, refers to how big the wave is. A loud sound will have extreme peaks and troughs, and a soft sound will stick closer to the center line. In the real world, sound is transmitted by shifting air pressure. A loudspeaker pumps the air at different rates, creating waves of greater air pressure. The faster it does this, the higher the sound, but the harder it pumps, the louder the sound. We measure frequency in hertz, or cycles per second. In other words, in one second, how many times will a sound wave cycle from one peak to the next? Humans typically have hearing in a range from about 20 hertz to 22,000 hertz, or 22 kilohertz. That 22 kilohertz doesn't last long though. Once you get into your 20s, it drops to around 17 kilohertz, and in your 40s, you'll be lucky to hear over 14. And that's assuming you haven't spent your life at rock concerts or firing rocket launches in combat. In digital audio, the number of times per second the computer samples the audio signal should be twice the highest frequency that needs to be represented. This is called the Nyquist rate after an electronic engineer called Harry Nyquist. So if we want to make sure our teenage population can hear a reproduction of sound right up to 22 kilohertz, we need to make sure our computer samples the sound at a rate at least double that, which is 44 kilohertz. Does that sound familiar? That's the frequency at which CDs sample audio. If you've been working with digital audio for a while, you may have noticed we typically work at 48 kilohertz or 96 kilohertz, or even as high as 192 kilohertz. Why would we need to if the Nyquist rate to reproduce sounds that only a young teen can hear is only 44 kilohertz? Well, it's a long story, but in a nutshell, frequencies much higher than 22 kilohertz, as they bounce off things in a listening environment, end up creating secondary sound waves that fall within the standard hearing range. So even though we can't hear the original frequencies, they end up affecting nuances in the overall tone of the sound. So should we be doing everything at a sample rate of 192 kilohertz? Well, if you're trying to faithfully reproduce the tonality of a Steinway piano, maybe. But in general modern post-production, audio engineers tend to be content with their raw source tracks being at 48 kilohertz.